Shukma. Welcome, my friends. John Harrington. My name is John Harrington. I'm a member, of the citizen of the Chickasaw Nation. And uh, along with the Apollo Chamber players, we would like to uh, tell you some stories about the moon. Well, what is the moon? And where did it come from? How did it get there? Well, like every culture around the world, American Indians have many different tales of the moon. But one thing is certain. The moon is a very valued and coveted being. Long ago, when the world was very young, the moon was a plaything of the animal tribe of people. One day, Coyote spoke up loudly to Antelope. Let our sons go out and learn how to steal the moon. When the eight young sons reached the open space where the animal people were rolling the great round shining ball, they hid themselves at one end of the playfield. The animal people knew that the boys were coming to steal it. They rolled it toward the boys, certain that it was too heavy for anyone to take away. But Coyote Brothers, one at a time, rolled it home. The owners of the moon caught up with the Coyote Brothers and killed them, one at a time. Then the Antelope Brothers took the moon from the youngest coyote and ran so swiftly, no one could catch them. When they reached home and told Coyote that it was his sons had been killed, Coyote cried loudly. Put that fire out! Bring me the moon! Put that fire out! Bring me the moon. They obeyed him. He took the moon back to its owners, and they gave him his sons, restored to life. One day, Woodpecker said to his grandmother, let me go and steal the moon. And when the moon people saw him coming, they knew his purpose and they began to laugh. Roll the moon towards a little woodpecker, said one of them. Let us see what he can do with such a big thing. When the moon reached him, he lifted it with difficulty and he staggered off with it. Again, the people laughed. Let him go as far as that ridge, but if he passes over it, we will kill him. They did not know that Woodpecker was very clever. When they reached the top of the ridge, they saw him and the moon at the top of the next hill. He had rolled the moon down from the first slope and his momentum carried it almost to the top of the next slope. Woodpecker flew over the valley, pulled the moon the rest of the way. The people ran after him until they were tired out and Woodpecker rolled the moon to his home. Sadly, the people started home without the moon. Let us make a new moon, they said and let us place it in the sky. Who will be the new moon? They asked. They decided that Yellow Fox will be the new moon, and Yellow Fox agreed.
They put him up in the sky where he was to shine by day as well as night. But he made the days so hot they took him down. Then they asked Coyote, Do you think you would make a good moon? Yes, of course, he replied. I would like to be the moon, for I can see everything. So they placed Coyote in the sky. He did not make the days too hot, but he did see everything. And whenever he saw anything wrong being done, he called loudly the name of the person and the wrong thing he was doing. The people who wished to do things in secret demanded that Coyote be taken from the sky. Nacharuchu was a leader of his people. He was an expert weaver, wise in medicine, young and tall, strong and handsome. Nacharuchu had no interest in the village maidens who were in love with him. He was very happy in his weaving. Two sisters, the yellow corn maidens, were desirous of him, but with evil intentions. They worked very hard to get his attention. said Nacharuchu, in four days I will marry. I will hang my pearl gourd outside of my home. Any woman who chooses to throw their finest corn at the gourd, and she whose meal is so well ground that it sticks to this omate, shall be my wife. The village was very excited and got right to work. Before she lived in the sky, Moon was a maiden of the village and was away on an errand when his announcement was made. She did not return until the fourth day and the Yellow Corn sisters teased her. They were certain she would not win the competition. 
And when the time came, all the maidens, including the yellow corn sisters, tried throwing their corn meal at the omate, but nothing would stick. Then Moon tossed her corn gently against the pearl omate, and every grain stayed. Not one fell to the ground. Nacharucha was so excited. He had already loved Moon, and now his life was perfect and complete. He and his sweet Moon wife were very happy together. The Yellow Corn Sisters were not happy. They betrayed Moon by tricking her into staring at her own reflection in a deep water well. They push her into the well and buried her alive, killing her. In his grief, Nacharuchu went to Moon's grave and found a white flower growing from the buried water well. He took it home and sang and prayed to it five times. His song was so beautiful and powerful that Moon arose from the flower and came back to life, as lovely and fair as ever.
But there was still the matter of the sisters. Moon hunted down the yellow corn maidens and turned them into snakes. She told them, your new home is among the rocks and cliffs of the desert, but you must never bite a person. Remember, you are powerful women, but you must be gentle. she returned home to her husband and they were very happy. Once was a village, they lived by the sea. They were fishermen and ate fish. There once was a bird named Raven, who was very lazy. Instead of fishing for himself, he followed the fishermen and ate their fish. Ka! 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 He would say, Gimme! 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 He was always hungry. He was insatiable. The people were kind. They continued to throw him fish. But it didn't matter. It was never enough. his begging. This bird is a pest. He is a nuisance and too overbearing. He will not leave us alone. He eats half of our fish. It's too much. Enough is enough, Raven. No more fish. Raven threw a huge tantrum. His eyes grew red with rage. I'll get your fish. Raven started snatching all the fish from the people. 
He grabbed them from their nets, from their fish hooks, and their hands. Ha ha ha! I told you. Ka! 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 At the next full moon, I'll avenge myself. I'll get you. Later, at the end of the new moon, the people were enjoying their fire, telling stories and eating smoked salmon. I wonder what Raven is up to now, they would ask. I hope he is far away from us. We are afraid, said the children. The chief assured them, don't be afraid, he has forgotten all about us. Suddenly, they heard a mighty scream and beating of wings. Raven flew in and soared over them. Ka! Ka! I'll teach you a lesson now. He soared high into the sky and snatched the bright and beautiful moon, carrying it away. And left the earth in darkness. What shall we do? How can we live without the moon? They were all sad and lonely. But four days later, they heard a loud cawing again and the beating of raven's wings. He had come back. Ka, ka. He sang, will you feed me now if I put the moon where it belongs? Isn't that worth a lifetime of fish? So be it, answered the people. What else can we do? Okay, it's a bargain. Raven pulled the moon from its hiding place. Grasping her with his beak, he soared high up in the sky and placed her back where she belonged. Now she could once again bathe the night with her silvery light. I thought the raven was just an insignificant little bird, said the chief. But now I see just how powerful he really is. Folks, there you have it. Here are some of our legends of the moon. There are many, many more, and it is certain that as we begin our new journey of traveling the stars, there will be many, many more to come.